it's very important we understand the target of faith is God. So to strengthen our faith is first to understand God and think about all the works of God. We can understand God from the Bible. The Bible talks a lot about what God has done for us. Uh, and then we can also look at our lives and see what God has done in our lives and see what God has done in other people's lives and to see whether we can see God's work in the people who love God. So when we see that God is very uh, real, God is doing all these things, uh, God is keeping His promises, and God is helping us and blessing us, and whenever we come to Him, He'll give us strength and peace and joy and also give us wisdom and give us ability to help people. All these show that God is real and God follows His promises. God is uh, trustworthy. Then we trust in God. So that's very simple. But many people still trust in their own experience from, the, from childhood because the experience from childhood is always you know, following the world, trusting in money, trusting in people they can trust. And so it's hard for some people to understand that, that, we, uh, that we can trust in God. So many people don't see that. And that's why they, uh, they don't have strength from God and their relationship with God is very, very weak. Now for myself, first I study the evidence about God. I'm very sure that God is real. I have this, uh, I will talk about this, the evidence that God is real. So that I hope you all see that. And also, I see that when I love God and other people love God, it's very um, clear that God is blessing us for those who love God. And I see that for those who don't love God or are following, you know, living in sin, following the world, I can always see destruction in their life. So when these people are willing to follow God and love God, we can see blessings come to their life. So that's something uh, we can see very uh, clearly from, you know, from the Bible and also from our lives. So, and then when we trust in Him more and obey Him more, we can see God's blessings more. That's how we can increase our faith. And then also when we pray for people, we can see God's work to cast out demons, to bring healing or to help people to experience His peace and love and joy. Now, so we need to first ourselves we need to build up relationship with God that we can experience His peace and love and joy all the time. So, and then when we pray for people, they can also experience God. Then we can see that God is very real. God is really uh, doing His work. And then we have more faith in Him. Okay, that's the first question. And then second question, is, is it possible to be motivated by the two? That means the uh, God's grace and the law and be able to to do everything right. And then a uh, third question is related. Uh, if both apply, both uh, God's grace and law apply in pleasing God. Okay. Uh, my answer is very clear. Actually, I've been explaining that from, uh, I've been explaining that from the beginning that the Bible is, is very clear that it's full of the promises of God, the grace of God. It's, and, and the motivation is always from the grace of God. We can see that in the Beatitude, it's always God promises to bless uh, f for those who follow God. And also in all the teachings, you can see that uh, Jesus said, you know, come to me and living water will flow from you. That's the promise of God. That's the grace of God. And then uh, when you abide in me, I will abide in you and you'll bear much fruit. That is a promise of God. So that's grace. And uh, when you build on the foundation, on the solid rock, then you know uh, what you build will not uh, fall apart. Uh, excuse me for a moment. And. Uh,
And one woman said to Jesus, Blessed is the woman who bore, gave birth to you and, and, uh, and nurtured you. And then Jesus said, Yes, but it's more blessed uh, to hear God's word and obey. You know, so it's very clear that blessed is the person who trusts in God and obey God and, and then uh, God will prepare for those for those who love him, things eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, and the human heart cannot think of. So all these are promises of God to motivate people to love God. And when we give a cup of cold water, we'll by no means lose the reward. So that's very clear. And then the Bible is also very clear that we are to obey God. It's very clear. And, you know, it's love God and love people, be kind to people, forgive people, do evangelism, to teach people everything Jesus has taught us. Uh, all these are in the Bible. Obedience of the law is all in the Bible. So, so that's, that's very clear from the Bible that God wants us to obey Him. That uh, the Bible is uh, very clear that uh, the two truths, God's grace and God's law. So and we need both because if we don't have God's grace then the person is just living under the law that's not how God wants us to live God wants us to have the spirit of adoption that we are adopted as children we can call Abba Father that we can trust in Him rejoice in the Lord is in the Lord that we rejoice it's very clear that the Bible wants us to live uh, under grace and not under the law. At the same time, we obey the law. It's very clear. So it's biblical. It's godly to do that. And when people don't follow, don't have the grace of God, it's just commanding people to, to follow God. They are making slaves, not making children. These people are enslaved to obey God. It's, that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says we can enjoy serving God, that God is very happy that when we serve God. So the Bible is motivating us with great God's grace. So it's godly to have both. So if we have the balance of both, can we um, can we do everything right? My answer is we cannot be perfect but we can do everything as correct as possible. So if we live under God's grace and rejoice because God is happy with us when we obey Him and love Him, then we can rejoice in the Lord. So for myself, I rejoice in the Lord all, all the time, all day long. Hallelujah! God is pleased with me when I praise Him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You're so wonderful. So all day long, I'm rejoicing in the Lord. And I have strength. And I have the motivation. I know that everything I do for God, God is very happy. God is guiding me. God is giving me strength. I have the confidence in God that God is doing all these things. So I have, I trust in God. God is good. God is kind. And then I also follow uh, uh, the law, to obey the law and blessing people and helping people. And and then whenever any sin appear, now many people are stuck with that. They're stuck with a few things. The sin, uh, also uh, they are affected by people, the anger, the frustration, uh, the problems in life, or their own emotional problems. So some people, they just, uh, they're controlled by all these things. And then they say, it's impossible to follow God uh, better that they say that the spiritual life is just too weak and and I thank God that God has given me this teaching and wisdom actually it's in the Bible I, I did not invent it but I just discovered in the Bible the point is the Bible tells us you know to understand the destructiveness of sin and destructiveness of of people's influence. The Bible says very clearly, if God is for us, I'm not afraid 
What can mere men do to me? They cannot do anything to harm me. So the Bible says that already. But people are affected. They hold on to what people said to them to hurt them. They just keep thinking, oh, this person hurt me. He said these unpleasant things. They always think about the bad things of people. And that is not what the Bible teaches us. The Bible teaches us, do not fret because of the sinners, lest you will sin. So it doesn't matter. Do not be frustrated. Do not be angry because these people are sinning. It doesn't matter. God is in control. So I choose, I thank God that He taught me, choose not to be affected by people because people can really do, they cannot do much to help us. It's God. And I've seen God raise me up so much, you know, in my spiritual life, in my relationship with God, in my wisdom, to teach people in my different spiritual gifts. God has blessed me so much and I've raised up the spiritual life of many people. So I see that it's possible and also to overcome sins. How to overcome sins and God taught me whenever the sinful thought because sinful thoughts are sin and then we just say no to the sins and just like Joseph that his mistress tempted him and he would just flee. And that's the way to flee away from sin. So for flee away from sinful thoughts and sinful action and sinful situations. So it's possible not to fall into sin. And whenever I'm going to talk about how to overcome the sin, whenever sin shows up, sinful thoughts shows up, we know that it's destructive and immediately we choose to obey God. And then people, they cannot really destroy our life. They have no authority. God is the authority. God is the one everything is in His hand. So when we believe in God, don't just believe one-third or one-half. Some people just believe in one-third. They don't believe that God is in control of everything. They just believe, okay, Jesus can give me eternal life. But they don't believe that God can bless the whole life. God has everything in control. When we trust in Him and obey Him, He can bless our whole life. And that's why many people don't have strength. And many people, they let Satan steal from the life, steal from the joy and the peace and the love and the relationship with people and wisdom. A lot of people don't have the wisdom from God because they just, they're controlled by the sin. So they don't have the wisdom to handle people's problem. And they don't make the best of their life. So it's very important that we make the best of our life by studying, and by working hard and by finding the wisdom of God and make the best of our lives. And I have I have worked on that uh, all my lifetime. I thank God that I was converted when I was uh, 19 years old. And after that, you know, I, I, I study hard. I Whenever I learn anything, I, I study it and also I ex practice it. And I also, when I teach any, hear any teaching, I always examine it from the whole Bible. I would study through the whole Bible, even before I became a pastor. I have this habit of studying through the Bible. What does the Bible say about that teaching? Before I was a pastor, I studied you know, the teaching about uh, tribulation. Many people think that tribulation is before the, I mean, sorry, about uh, the rapture. Many people think the rapture happens before the tribulation. It's not supported by, by, by the Bible. I'm going to talk about that on the third day. I studied that and see very clear of it evidence that that uh, that the uh, the rapture is after the tribulation. So we have to be ready for for the tribulation. And God is in control of everything. So He'll give us strength because if He doesn't give us strength, then all the Christians would die when they cannot buy the food because they don't have the seal of the beast. But the Bible, you know, the book of Revelation talk about the saints in the middle of the tribulation. So he kept, keeps the, the saints alive. So he keeps us alive by miracles. So, you know, actually I, I want to be in the tribulation. I want to experience God's presence in a special way because at that time the Christians would trust in God more. So I always believe in the goodness of God. And 
in the tribulation we can see the goodness of God more because it's a difficult time so we have to tr totally trust in God so I hope that we all will see that God is good God is in control of everything so I just make the best of my life now many many Christians they waste the time I don't waste my time time is very precious I don't waste my time I spend time studying I spend time praying I spend time helping people I spend time writing material so that's those are the things we should do to make the best of our life so I I say that it's possible to overcome all sins and now it doesn't mean we're perfect we still even when we serve God we still have impatience and sometimes frustration those are sins also or lack of faith but we try to overcome that and then God is happy with us when we try to overcome that so be very sure that when we try to overcome our sins God is very happy so we don't have to to uh, worry about the sinful thoughts that come up immediately we'll take care of the sinful thoughts okay now if you have any more questions please send it to me and uh, okay I I don't see any more questions now and I saw so at this point we'll talk about how to overcome sins okay how to overcome sins and God gave me the key is to be aware of sins and then overcome it uh, when the sin just appear in in uh, in our thoughts so I uh, I explained that very clearly first whenever we preach I hope you always talk about God's nature and grace because God's nature is his quality his quality helps us when we understand how good God is how perfect God is how powerful he is how he is in control of everything we will understand his nature he's omnipresent and he knows everything when we understand that then we say God is in control I don't have to be afraid so I find a problem with many Christians because they just don't believe many things the Bible says because they don't try to experience those things I try to experience those things I trust in God and God provides for me and then I pray for people I I spend more time praying and then God's presence did come very powerfully and then I lay hands on people and pray for them and then they experience God so all these things shows that God is real and so I have confidence in God I know his nature I know his grace so his nature so in the preaching we should talk about God's nature so people understand so when we talk about how to overcome sins we can talk about his nature God is holy and holiness is beautiful I, 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 I talked about that earlier because we can see that in heaven there is no more sin and heaven is beautiful because people don't sin anymore there's no frustration no anger no uh, yelling no unforgiveness it's all forgiveness it's all beautiful so God is holy and his holiness is beautiful and uh, and then he cannot stand any sin because sin will destroy sin will destroy we all have experienced that in our family if we have yelling anger frustration unforgiveness it would destroy the family and two God is love that motivate him to prepare salvation for us and help us to overcome sins so he will help us he save us and he help us three he is powerful and wise he is almighty he's wise he can give us the power and wisdom to overcome sins and four he owns everything he can bless us greatly when we pursue holiness so I want to pursue holiness because God is pleased with me and then he will bless me so I'm I'm happy to follow God totally and then God's grace to help us overcome sins so this is grace now difference between nature God's nature is his quality inner quality his grace is what he does for us to bless us first point God prepares salvation to deliver us from sins and forgive us whenever we repent now the nature is related to the grace nature is his love and then his grace is to prepare salvation and he forgive us from us uh, uh, whenever we re repent and two he give us a new spiritual life that naturally rejects sin so he give us a new nature many Christians testify that after they saved they have this motivation to overcome sins they hate sin they hate 
to gamble, they hate to yell at people, they hate to not to forgive people, they hate a bad relationship with people. So that God give us a new nature that help us to overcome sins. And then three, the Holy Spirit prompts us to repent when we have sins. He does not give up on us even when we sin. So the Holy Spirit continues to move on us. He's, his nature is He is patient and kind. He always try to uh, comfort us and motivate us to change. And even when we sin, He still accepts us. And four, the Holy Spirit give us motivation and wisdom to overcome our sins that we need motivation. When we overcome the sins, God is very happy. So that's a very simple motivation. When we follow God, God is very happy, so we are happy to obey God and turn away from our sins. And the wisdom. Why should we say no to sins? Because sins are destructive. Sin will destroy our life. And how can we overcome the sins? Because we know that sins are destructive and following God is good. And then we don't have to be angry with people. We don't have to be affected by people. We don't have to be hurt by people. We don't have to worry because God is preparing things for us. He has prepared wonderful blessings for us. So we can trust in God for all His blessings that give us the wisdom to say no to anger with people because it's their problem. They are angry with us. It's their problem. I don't have to be angry with them. And then His grace, number five, the Holy Spirit gives us joy when we overcome sins that give us motivation. So when we overcome sins, when we have victory over sins, we feel joyful. So that's a, a, a blessings of God. I'm sorry. Uh, and then six, God puts good Christians around us to be good examples for us to follow. So that's good. And uh, also they help us too, to how to overcome sin. And seven, God will bless us and help us to enter His perfect plan when we pursue holiness. So when we pursue holiness, then we'll become honorable vessels to be used by God to enter His perfect plan. So that's, uh, those are His uh, grace. Now you can keep thinking about the grace of God to help us. There could be other points. Uh, for instance, um, when we overcome our sins, then, then we find that God will bless our whole life, that whole life is raised up to a high level, that we'll meet holy people, we'll have friendship with holy people, and God will arrange, prepare for us holy spouses. So all these are wonderful reasons, reason why we should pursue holiness. Okay, when we sincerely repent of our sins, God will definitely forgive us. So that's very important. When we have sins, the first step to overcome sins is to, to repent of our sins and trust that He will forgive us. Now many Christians will do this. They, when they sin, they feel very bad and say, I dare not pray. Now that is not what God wants us to do. He wants us to come to Him with confidence. Even when we sin, we say, Lord, I'm sorry, please forgive me. God is very happy and He will give us strength and give us forgiveness. So 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And it's for sure God will for follow His, His promises. God follow His promises. I use an illustration. Just like the light bulb will follow uh, the light switch. When you switch on a light, it will turn on. It will not say, well, today I, I have no mood to turn on for you. The light will not do that. He will follow the rule and God will follow His own rule. His own rule is that His, His promises, He promised to forgive us when we uh, repent of our sins. And then a sacrifice of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. This, O oh Lord, you will not despise. So when we repent, we are really sorry for our sins because sin destroys our life. We need to understand that's very important for many people why they don't turn away from their sins because they think that sins is nothing. It's okay to sin and just I ask God to forgive. But we need to understand that we have talked about that earlier that sins are destructive. It will destroy our relationship with God, destroy our relationship with people, destroy our spiritual life, this, uh, destroy the favor of God, destroy opportunities, destroy the trust of people. So, so sins are destructive. So we need to understand this. And also people, many people did not understand that 
worry is sin. Frustration is sin. Because these are lack of faith. Whatever is not our faith is sin. So when people worry about God, worry about the situation, worry about the future, worry about people, that is sin. Or depressed is sin because that is uh, lack of faith. And also not obeying the commandment is, is sin. Uh, not obeying the law is sin. And then uh, the greatest commandment is to love the Lord our God with all our heart. And then to love people as ourselves when people don't love God totally. That is also sin. When people don't love God, love people as like themselves, they are also sinning. And we are more than conquerors through Him who loved us. So we are more than conquerors. Jesus, give us victory. Romans eight thirty seven. And then five steps to victory. 